Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa. Paikon Paikon APAC. APAC 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my name is Matt. My name is Vicky. And we're happy to be here attending Paikon in Japan for the very first time. Uh, we are also organizers of PyCon Philippines. But first, I just want to share uh, that we love onigiri. It's the first thing we ate when, once, uh, as soon as we got here. I also like Inari Sushi the best. <laughs> um. So today, uh, we hope to share some of the things we learned that made our community thrive and last. First, um, I want to share what the Python community means to us and why it matters. Um, here's a photo of us attending our first PyCon in the Philippines. This was in 2012 and our Python journey began here. Uh, so uh, during this time, we were just attendees. Uh, uh, another, group, uh, another group of people uh, organized this and we were just attendees. Um, the experience was so inspiring that we decided to dive into Python and have been advocates for it ever since. Um, it was like we had a PyCon a hangover. We met like-minded folks uh, and felt like anything is possible and that we could be ourselves. We just wanted more of it. So at that time, um, we were in our mid-twenties, so um, we, I guess you could say we were still young, idealistic, and still finding our place in the world. So how we felt at that time is, uh, is best described and summarized by the song Shine by Collective Soul. Here's some of the lyrics. So it's a bit cheesy, but that's how we felt. <laughs> The journey to building a Python community. Personal experiences in building Python PH and other local Python communities. So after attending PyCon in 2012, um, as I've said, we, we just wanted more of it. So um, we, we ended up stalking some of the people we met at the conference. <laughs> And then uh, the organizers as well. Um, and then it, they eventually, <laughs> uh, maybe we bugged them uh, too much. And then they eventually passed the torch of responsibility to us. Uh, funny story. So we started, uh, we started by organizing Python meetups with very few people attending it. As you can see, it's very few. Uh, even though we did not exactly know what we were doing back then, we just knew how we felt, that we really liked it. Uh, after each meetup, we hung out with a few people we met, also known as Corporate Slaves Anonymous. Uh, eventually, <laughs> we made the toast to create Py uh, Py Python Philippines as a nonprofit group. Aside from meetups, we organized the first hackathon. As you can see, it's the same people <laughs> attending the meetups and very few. And then on October 8, 2013, we officially incorporate, incorporated Python PH as a nonprofit. So this picture shows PyCon PH or PyCon Philippines 2014. It's technically the second PyCon Philippines, but the first PyCon we or uh, but also the first PyCon we organized as a as an incorporated uh, group. We also organized our very first few diversity initiatives: Pi Ladies Manila and Django Girls Manila. Fostering diversity and inclusion. Why is it important to have diversity and inclusion? So it provides a safe space and allows and just allows ideas and people to flourish. 
establishing a shared vision and a certain sense of purpose. Um, so to ensure that uh, we um, we provide the safe space and allow people and ideas to flourish. Um, we have to make sure that everyone's aligned and on the same page regarding our mission. This is, uh, this is uh, part of the, our Articles of Incorporation. We listed our goals and mission together with the core belief as a group. Um, the, uh, we decided that we are just here to create small dents of improvement in the Philippine tech industry and motivate individuals to be technically competent and passionate about their craft. With that simple core belief, little did we know that we will create this much impact and reach. Um, what happened was we organized PyCon in Manila at the topmost part. Uh, people attended from different parts of the Philippines and then they, they got inspired to organize their own meetup groups in their own provinces. Collect, also collectively known, um, we co collectively we call this whole thing as pilo our PyLocal initiative. We also did partnerships with women-focused groups and partnerships with school orgs, schools and school orgs. So throughout the years, um, we have volunteers coming in and dropping out. And for a very long time, the, the important leadership roles have been vacant, which also resulted to existing leaders taking multiple responsibilities, being spread too thin, and getting burned out. But recently, there have been some improvements. The notable ones are um, two core volunteers stepped up as PyCon, PyCon chair. In 2023, Alison Alvaran, and in 2024, Zorek Sal. He's here with us now. Uh, our core volunteers also starting to, uh, started to take leadership roles, like committee leads for Python PH as, the, as an org, uh, and PyCon PH. We also, we, with little funding we have, we also started funding volunteers to attend other PyCons in Asia and PyLocals. So um, to give you a background, when we started PyCon Philippines, uh, it's composed of nine board of trustees. But at that time, I was the only woman in the group. But uh, currently, we have uh, six women and three men. And we also have one board member coming from one Pi local group. Um, but all these amazing things did not come without blood, sweat, and tears. Despite the abundance of positive outcomes, community stewards often face challenges such as burnout and succession planning. So the question remains, how do we make this good thing last? Matt is going to share the story. Okay. So first, um, let's answer why do we volunteer? So for many, it's the profound sense of purpose that guides them. It's about creating an impact greater than ourselves. This community is more than just a group. It can be a family united by an innate desire to belong and keep improving. However, this dedication often treads a fine line, balancing work, life, and community. Our personal and professional lives get overshadowed by volunteering commitments. Sometimes it's the other way around. Also, you, as you know, passion can also lead to burnout. And for some, volunteering just stops making sense and they move on to other things. 
So throughout this journey, what we've realized is we have our, that our most vital resources are our passion and our time. And the challenge lies in channeling our passion sustainably and valuing the time we invest. It became evident that effectively managing our passion and time is key to driving our community goals. It's easy to get lost with all the invitations to host frequent events, activities, and also partnerships. However, our focus has been on delivering quality and keeping true to our mission. So what we did, um, so mundane administrative tasks can divert focus. So we outsource such tasks so that we can concentrate on what truly matters. And we also document all things. It helps newcomers understand procedures and also ensures consistency. And we also have experienced volunteers partner with newcomers. And it also has a good side effect of forming new friendships. Our community is built on passion, but to nurture it, we need structured respect for time. So we need core and seasonal volunteers. We realize we need a mix. So core volunteers are our constant pillars, while seasonal volunteers bring in the right amount of help at the right time. We also recognize uh, the need for a leave of absence. So life happens, or sometimes you're just burnt out. We recognize this and encourage volunteers to take a step back. And we also started practicing letting go with grace. Um, sometimes if a core volunteer just can't uphold their commitments, um, it's essential for the collective morale to part ways. We encourage them instead to become seasonal volunteers if it still makes sense to them. It's tough, but it's necessary. We also encourage everyone to own, their, own up to their ideas. So with any volunteer group, a lot of people have great ideas. But execution matters. We encourage members to champion their own ideas and lead by example. Unforeseen challenges will always arise. And here's what we did. So we identified the bare minimum. What's the least we can do to keep the community alive and thriving? This isn't about settling. It's about resilience. And sometimes the best action is to take no action. Taking a break can offer clarity and renewed energy. We also value our nucleus volunteers. So these, these are our unsung heroes. When others step back, they step up, ensuring that the community's heart keeps beating. Managing passion and time is an art and science. It's about strategic planning yet also about riding the wave when needed. So we've adopted the ethos of Kaizen, a term inspired, and hopefully I'm not butchering the meaning, um, <laughs> by the Japanese philosophy of Kaizen, which stands for continuous improvement. The added D is a nod to the Unix convention for demonized processes, representing background operations that are always running. Essentially, Kaizen symbolizes a group constantly working in the background, dedicated towards bettering themselves and the community. At Kaizen's core is a deeply embedded culture. We do team buildings through activities we foster bonds, ensuring connected and a cohesive team. We also 
always try to look out for potential um, of anyone who have emerging talent and recognizing and nurturing them. We also celebrate each individual's inputs, ensuring a motivated and valued uh, community member. We also started allocating uh, what we call a continuous improvement fund. Um, it's our investment in their future and also backing the aspirations and their growth as well. We also split, uh, we also split responsibilities through committees. So, every, so that we know that these responsibilities are always manageable. We also did a coaching or a body system, which ensures that knowledge flows naturally and that members can share the responsibility and, um, and a sense of accountability. We've also realized that when our volunteers participate in international conferences and pi locals, they absorb fresh perspectives and return with an amplified sense of ownership, which is very important in, uh, I guess, in any community-led um, groups. In essence, the Kaizen approach is a perpetual journey of growth. This ensures we aren't just producing followers, but also cultivating a new generation of forward-thinking leaders. Through Kaizen, we emphasize the idea that Leadership is a continuous journey of evolution. Also, we've realized and recognized that building communities is, is a complex problem. There are really no concrete solutions. We, on, we can only do experiments. We build up our toolkit, and, and we still realize that what works now may not work in the future. And what works for our current volunteers may not work in the next generation. So this makes community building an ever-evolving endeavor, which is exciting for us. Okay. So over the course of our 10-year journey building Python PH, there were moments when we'd ask ourselves, why do we shoulder these responsibilities? Is it all truly necessary? Every path we've taken has had its share of challenges and pain. Yet we consistently chose the ones that felt worth the struggle. Being among passionate, idealistic individuals has been more than just a privilege. It has been our driving force. The true fulfillment we discovered wasn't found in the tangible benefits that we received. Instead, it came from the positive changes we could instill in someone else's life. We've come to understand that it's about the ripple effect of our actions. By passing on even the smallest good thing, we've witnessed how tiny ripples can transform into waves of change. In this journey, the reward hasn't been the external validations or the benefits. Rather, it's the transformation we've seen in ourselves, and more importantly, in this incredible community that we call home. So, yeah. Thank you for, Thank you for listening. Uh, oh, wait. But, sorry, but, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Um, we'd also like, uh, Mickey, can you invite them? Uh, we're also <laughs> looking for speakers for PyCon Philippines 2024 uh, in February. Uh, there's no exact date yet, but uh, uh, it's going to be in February, definitely. Um, deadline is December 3, 2023, to apply as a speaker. Uh, please join us. Uh, if you have questions, please look for us. We'll just be around. Uh, and look for our team. Uh, we, we have candies. <laughs> okay. yeah.
thank you so much both of you oh, for delivering uh, your community experience and uh, i really uh, can correlate lot of the struggles which i faced and <laughs> i mean lot of them faced in the community so do we have any questions uh, for both of them yes thank you so in your talks you uh, you mentioned that you have a group of core volunteers called kaizen right so uh, how do how did you find them in the beginning so i mean how did you uh, organize this small group to become the core member of the of, of this of this conference and uh, like t how long did you take about that thanks sure do you want to answer okay maybe i'll answer so um actually organizing pycon has always been a the entry point the entry point for this so during during pycon usually you send out like a call for volunteers um and then we just i i for people who have like a heightened sense of responsibility who are really serious about you know uh being committed to the volunteer work uh, then we invite them after pycon um and that's really just how we started it 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 wasn't um it wasn't always like we were thinking about this having a group of people of kaizen it was like a natural progression that we've observed over the years and then it's more about recognizing that they are that kind of people and then we just keep on in inviting um we also created a we actually have a volunteers manual these days we have a volunteers manual we have their uh we documented there how we how you can like vouch or become part of uh kaizen this time um we we made it a bit more organized before it was really just um we started out as eyeing for people during their volunteer time in our pycons uh any more questions from anyone uh we still have time so if anybody have any questions we can during the 10 years what was your highlight the the company the combination of pain and <laughs> and and then uh, a sense of fulfillment uh and then maybe for me the the highlight it's the same for you right like the highlight is seeing the uh the next generation uh continue what we're doing because we're going to die someday right somebody has to continue <laughs> what we're doing <laughs> Not, but not it's like intensive. having kids we don't have kids yet but it's like having kids and then seeing them grow uh through through the years okay thank you so any more questions for asking <laughs> so if you don't have uh, any yeah okay Thank you so much for the talk. Uh, I wanted to ask, how did you go from the idea of, this is a cool idea, we should do something for Python, or Python with people around us, to, okay, here's a tangible event, people can come to it, let's get people to it. How did you manage that transition? You mean guys, uh, having core volunteers? Uh, oh, I mean like organizing the first, Python. The, very first event yeah uh, uh it, it's basically you got it it's basically how you yeah. did you organize the event and what is the first thoughts on okay yeah so so in 2012 uh miki and i we were we just attended the first one right so that was our first pycon uh first time experiencing um this kind of environment and then we just we were just like so hyped we were just one of the new volunteers we were just so hyped and we thought and, and it's and, like breathing fresh air and then you just want more of it <laughs> and, and then you also just wanted to share that same air that you breathe to as many people as you can because it was the first time that was that something like that happened in our country 
So we thought, hey, uh, we want more of our country men to experience that as well. So that was really it. And then we started looking for those volunteer, uh, those organizers, and and asked them, why are you s suddenly gone radio silenced? Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, any more questions? We still have five minutes. Uh, let me th let me think about how to how to organize this question. Um, you have a co a group of core member, but uh, like uh, uh, how many like. I know in some conference, I come from, I came from Taiwan, maybe like in some conference, I, from what I heard, maybe like only five of these day core members. So I, I want to, what I want to ask is in Philippines, in Paikang, Philippines, like what is the uh, turnover rate of the volunteers? Like only this five is always continuous join and every year, so every year others people are different or like how many people uh, retain from year to year? In the, in, uh, as a volunteer. I just, just roughly describe this kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, so d did you mean that how many people keep on volunteering? Over yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, basically, okay. year on year growth of volunteers. Okay. Year on year. Yeah, so let's see. So with, with the core volunteers, we just try to keep it very small because we kind Around of... Around 35 maximum. Maximum, of, yeah, 30, 35. And you sh but during PyCons, we have like more volunteers during that time. Um, 30 or 40. Yeah, but we do have... <laughs> or 50, so, so, yeah. depending on the size of the conference. Yeah. So, so, so maybe with also something that... Um, so when we started, uh, when we formed the nonprofit org before, there were like nine people. Of those nine, only three of us are left, like with the ones who founded. But <laughs> the people who got left behind. <laughs> um, but during the, I think that was 20, we, but we still have volunteers who are now part of the um, Kaizen group who were there since 20, 2015. 2015. Like the PyCon chair now is uh, started volunteering in 2015. 2015. Uh, Allison, uh, yeah. but the PyCon chair for 2024 started volunteering in 2018. Yeah. I think at the beginning we didn't know how to encourage uh, how them. and how to uh, we didn't exactly know how to coach people. <laughs> we just uh, made do with what we had at that time. That's that's also why. Uh, it's just recently that we have uh, next-gen leaders up. step up. Uh, yeah, just to add on that, right? Like it's an interesting conversation to have. It's like uh, another open space. So we can <laughs> discuss long uh, about it because so even for the uh, tech PyCon APAC, uh, uh, this conference is an example. So a lot of the volunteers uh, we see uh, they'll register just for the namesake. So if you go a lot of work groups in the uh, channel for content and everything, they'll just register. They wanted to see their name on the website. So for that matter, a lot of people will join. But like they pointed, so getting volunteers is easy. Getting volunteers who are contributing and uh, getting into a core group is difficult. Because that is where your real work matters. Yeah. Just uh, anybody can register as a volunteer. It's just a open form and you can fill your interest like, hey, I'm good at designing, I'm good at photography, I'm good at this, that. Uh, you can fill the form and you can be a volunteer. But that's not the case. Over the uh, span, like how you're contributing uh, and community uh, identifies your work. It's not just sim a one day task. So, for the example, uh, uh, take PyCon Philippines an example. The conference is in uh, February. They started working now. PyCon APAC, which is happening on uh, October, they started work on uh, May, June that time. So, last month we did PyCon India. We did like five months of work. So, it, it's a uh, lot of work from a lot of people. A lot of volunteers is required. Yeah. But best thing is figuring out who are core and yeah. who are contributing, identifying them 
transitioning them into a core group and transitioning them into chairs. So that's the long procedure. Like I completely <laughs> correlate and thank you so much. And thank you so much for the wonderful questions from the audience. And once again, thanks Matt and Michaela for the wonderful talk. We really loved it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.